time of year for more mods to my uh, Vespa. So, RS24 front shock. That's what we're doing today. Back lens tomorrow. My helper. Get back. Now, in order to do this, and I'm at the same time going to change the brakes to the Brembo. Now, what you need is the Brembo caliper pads comes with it. You need, I have this Zellini uh, adapter. This adapts the uh, Brembo to the fitting. But what doesn't come with the system are two stainless steel metric 10 by 20 bolts, um, screw bolts. Now, you need these. Basically, you need them automotive grade, stainless steel like this, and you need them European metric, not Japanese, because Japanese 10 by 20 has a different thread, and it will not fit into the existing caliper. Uh, last thing that you need is a bleeding kit, um, and then over here, you need tools, you need a Surface Pro computer, just in case you run into difficulty, plus it's also nice to follow uh, this person on uh, Modern Vespa. I should read it. It's, uh, hang on. Keitham, who put up these excellent instructions on installing the shocks. So we got a guideline here. We got our toolboxes. We're ready to go. So the first thing we have to do here is remove the wheel. So we're going to support the front with the uh, pet carrier. And we'll stick it under here, and then we'll start to remove the wheel. So, taking the wheels off. So, last bolt. Don't lose these little washers, like, in cracks like that. And this should just come off. Oh my god! Look at that! It's so light! My life depends on this little thing? Wow. Interesting. We'll put it down. Move on. Okay, the next thing I do is... Remove this and put it aside. Now we are going to remove these two bolts and get up there and remove the other two bolts to remove this shock. I took this off um, to get some extra room and I noticed that uh, this was broken. I, I think it's also broken on the GTS as well. Now it explains a few things why it rat rattled. But um, I'm going to repair that with some glue. And the next thing I'm doing is taking these bolts off and I'm using this. Now, I have one of these. I can't get into the bottom one. I can get into the top one. So, retorquing it later on might be a challenge. For the record, um, I undid it with this, which was easy enough. But um, here you go long uh, wiggle thing and that. And go in from this angle like that and you're going to be able to get in there and do it so that's how we're going to do it when we have to torque it later okay we're in here we can undo the top no problem at all this one here little bit of a problem because the shock doesn't allow the ratchet to fit in so we're going to have to take it off another way okay to get it off we couldn't fit anything in, so we did it that way. Now, apparently, the new shock isn't going to be a problem. The other side, the uh, ratchet worked fine. Once the bolts are off, you just pull off the shock and take it out. Okay. Okay, so this came off of here, so I put it on here. And then we put this on like this and like that and then the washer that came with the RS-22 and we got two bolts so it should look like that when we're finished okie doke okay to get thoroughly frustrated is getting this bracket on to this bolt because the bolt although it doesn't turn left or right it does go up and down so there's a small opening there and what we did is take an allen key and get under there and you need a buddy for this to push that bolt down so that it stays down enough to get the nut on. There's a little trick, take another picture. The Allen key goes in there and hold it. Okay. 
<clears throat> is the camera was uh, recording while I was under the bike, and when I wanted to record, I stopped it from recording. So by the time everything was finished and I went up to the computer room, I realized that. So I'm going to have to redo this and show you the final steps of the shocks and what I did to install the Brembo brakes. So you saw how we attached it up there. And then of course we just went in here and torqued them. And these were torqued at 25 and the top were torqued at 30 uh, newtons. And once these were torqued, then you could theoretically put your wheel back together, put this and this back on, and you'd be good to go. Now, if you're doing a Brembo brake installation, um, the very first thing I did was I bled, I opened the bleeder valve with my um, bleeder and drained some of the uh, brake fluid out of the old brake calipers which were attached here and then I removed them and removed the banjo. Now when you remove the banjo uh, you have to have something underneath because it's going to drip some brake fluid in there and also when you remove the caliper um, it's going to have some coming out there if you're not careful. Once the old caliper is removed then we install the bracket with the same bolts um, that you had the original um, the original caliper on and then these are the two stainless steel 10 by 20 millimeter bolts that I bought and I put Loctite on both and I put these into the new Brembo caliper. Once that's done I had a bit of difficulty getting the banjo to fit because it is in a different position and I got it to fit here Okay, and I screwed it in and uh, then once that was in there I then proceeded to uh, take my bleeder and with the vacuum I had somebody else pour brake fluid in the top uh, which obviously is right up here. Okay, So this was opened up and basically somebody was ready to pour brake fluid in so that it never got empty and I squeezed the vacuum thing off and on for about 35-40 seconds until finally some fluid came out and it was a bit bubbly and full of air. So then what I did is uh, I closed it and then I had my buddy up there, uh, my helper, and what he would do is squeeze the brake five times good and then hold it closed and I would open the bleeder for just three seconds and it would spit out bubbly air and I'd close it. And he'd squeeze five times and then like that and then hold it tight, close the brake lever. So basically he'd be squeezing the brake lever one, two, three, four, five and then hold it in. And we did this about um, eight to ten times before there was hardly any air and another one or two times for good luck. And then we sealed it up. And on top we then filled up the brake fluid and uh, then of course we put the wheel back on. Now, um, we then, I took the bike out for a ride and obviously the first few times around the block um, your brakes have to set and everything else so you really don't have, it feels like something's wrong but uh, once once you give it a good shot and everything's set then um, I took it for a nice ride. Now how did it feel? It felt great. 